Computational complexity is a really important concept in, uh, in numerical methods and in, in computing in general and in the numerical methods we're, we're, we're learning about using computers to solve problems and we're learning about how to uh, uh, pose problems so that you can solve them with, with computers and computational complexity is usually divided into two parts. I'm going to put a little axis here to, to show these. Um, so we have two dimensions that, that are the most common dimensions and I'm, I need to give a little more, more room underneath here. Uh, one is time complexity. Time complexity. And the other is uh, space complexity. Oops. Space complexity. And time complexity refers to the amount of computation time necessary. So this is like, this is like flops. Um, uh, or I'll put just uh, number of operations. Uh, another thing that we should be thinking of in terms of uh, complexity is uh, is CPU. Uh, CPU time. And uh, space complexity on the other hand refers to uh, memory usage. Okay, so memory usage and and you should you should basically think that think of that as oh like RAM. Whoop. RAM. Okay. So, uh, I mean, strictly speaking, um, time complexity and space complexity uh, can still be analyzed independent of, of, of CPU time and RAM, but those are, are sort of the, the uh, physical analogs in real computers that we have uh, representing time and space complexity. And so when we're talking about the time complexity of an algorithm, and, and actually we do this when we're talking about space complexity too, or we can, we use something called big O notation. Big O notation. And they use this in, in, in the book in, in Chopper Canal, and they, they, they say, well, this, when we evaluate an algorithm, they say, well, this algorithm is order n, or order n squared. So order, so this is order n, for example. And what this refers to is you analyze the um, time complexity, the number of operations, as a function of the input size. So the input size, uh, where's a good place to do this? Okay, okay. Input size equals n. That's that's what's meant by n. So this is the input size, and uh, then computational complexity uh, refers to an algorithm, uh, but it's al always for a specific problem. And the other thing that you need to know is it is a it is a worst case scenario worst case scenario okay so um, this is important because because it, let's say we're we're talking about the computational complexity of LU decomposition okay and LU decomposition then is a specific algorithm and uh, the book actually goes through this and it, it analyzes the, uh, the number of computations needed uh, for LU decomposition. Uh, it also analyzes the number of computations needed, uh, for example, to compute the matrix inverse um, using LU decomposition and that, they say, is requires uh, for this is just for an example requires uh, four n cubed uh, over three plus uh, or not plus but minus minus 
n over 3. Okay, so that's that's nice, um, but then the question is, what is what does this mean in big O notation? Well, uh, 3 is the biggest power here, n cubed, and so we just say it's order n cubed. Okay, that's that's the big O notation for the the complexity of this algorithm, and it's really referring to time complexity. So the other uh, the other issue is space complexity. So space complexity is how much memory it uses. So the more, uh, f for example, if we have a big matrix and and we we have this huge matrix, well, we'll not only need computation time, we need the time to compute maybe a whole bunch of a whole bunch of uh, like for example in LUD composition we've got to zero out all these elements so that's a whole bunch of multiplications and divisions and and all these other operations well yeah sure we have to do those operations and that takes time and and uh, sort of CPU resources so to speak but then we also have to store it every single number that we compute has to be stored and so how much space we we need to store that number or the, all the numbers necessary is the space complexity and so the less uh, complex the less amount of memory the amount of uh, space required to store the information for an algorithm the better the algorithm the less time required to compute uh, uh, the, the less number of multiplications divisions subtractions whatever the operations may be uh, the better uh, you know, the better the algorithm is in terms in terms of the computational complexity. There's one other issue that's implicit in in we're not going to go super deep. Uh, there's a whole field of computational complexity. Uh, the book uh, pa Papa Dimitro he he writes one of the famous books in compu computational complexity. Um, there are other works that you can reference um, if you're really going to get into it, but. Uh, the only other thing that I think we really need to mention in talking about uh, computational complexity is there's this notion of parallelizability. Parallelizability. And that's the concept of whether something uh, can, so uh, serial versus parallel. So if something has to be one operation, then another, then another. So all these operations are dependent upon each other, or if it's parallelizable. So an example of a problem that would be uh, parallelizable uh, would be integration. So if I'm going to integrate from uh, uh, a to b, uh, f of x, f of x, uh, dx. Well, that is is a parallelizable problem. We could take that and and if we say uh, C is uh, between A and B, then we can say, well, we could just split that into two chunks. So that's equal to the integral from uh, A to C of f of x uh, dx plus the integral from C to B of f of x dx. And whatever algorithm that we could we use to implement these, so we could just do these integrals separately, and then add the product together. So that is an example of an operation that is parallelizable, parallelizable, um, and this becomes important. Um, this becomes important in in doing real problems. I, uh, again, I'm, we don't need to get too far into it, but just to comment so that you can know if you hear anything mo the, more, the way they deal with these in, in computational complexity theory is with uh, different definitions. And so they define Turing machines, which is a theoretical computer basically that computes things. And then there's also a non-deterministic uh, Turing machine. And, and, and that's sort of a massively parallel uh, computer that that can compute a whole bunch of uh, operations simultaneously, and so it's it, it, they sort of deal with this notion implicitly, but but know that it's important: time complexity, space complexity, parallelizability. Uh, this big O notation that we use throughout the book when we talk about an algorithm, uh, where we're about going to talk talk about it, we're talk about how we can save space, and all these things are good because it can make us be able to solve 
a problem more quickly and more efficiently in terms of the computer's resources.